Hello and welcome to the HTML5 lecture series at SNHU. I'm Tom Adamson, visiting professor. Uh, this is the last of our summer lecture series for this summer. This is lecture 32 on HTML5 and Unity 3D. Uh, let me have some coffee here. Now, uh, Unity 3D. This is really a great marriage. And I, for those of you who don't know what Unity 3D is, I'll, I'll show you. And then we have HTML5. What we can do is that we can have Unity 3D, a game uh, that you play in Unity 3D, actually talk to its HTML document, and we can have the document actually talk to the game. What this means is, since we can do this, we can use any and all of the features of HTML5 along with Unity 3D. That is so cool, it's pathetic. I mean, that is the coolest of the cool. And the best I can do is give you an introduction to that in one lecture. But you'll get an introduction, you'll get the idea of what it'll do. Let's just look at the screen here for a minute, please. This is the Unity uh, 3D website. It's unity3d.com. Uh, you can download a free version that has some restrictions, so make sure you read the restrictions and honor the restrictions. You can get Unity Pro here. They're running uh, for $75 a month for 12 months, or you can just buy it out completely. Um, uh, they have over 2 million people that use uh, Unity 3D. We use Unity 3D here at the university and found it's a, it's a great program to teach people uh, these concepts. Okay, we're gonna stay on the screen here and I'm just gonna come over here and change, change screens. What I've got here is I've got uh, Unity 3D and this is the free version. And for those that aren't familiar with it, I'll sort of walk you through it. Uh, what I have is that this is the editor window here. And I've got a ground here. Uh, I have a plane. And I have a first person controller, which is this right here. That's going to be me. Uh, and then I have a directional light to light up the scene. And I have a cube, which is this right here. And I also put in a sky box so that you can sort of see the sky and what have you. And what I could do is, is that I can go ahead and play this, and when I play this, uh, you, this, is, this will be me, for, I'll be the first person. You'll see me move around this, this cube here, this box. What I did with this box here, stay on the screen, please. What I did with this box, I'm gonna click on it, This, when I have selected the box, which I'm calling the cube because that's effectively what it is, and I come over here to the inspector panel, this gives me information about that particular object that I've clicked on, okay? This gives me information about it. This tells me where it's located, how it's rotated, what its scale is, and so on. What I did is I checked the little box here and I said this is gonna be a trigger, which means that when I walk up to it, I can walk right through it, and if I have code, the correct code, it'll register when I walk into it. Okay, let's, let's have a look. Uh, stay on the screen there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change this top window to a console, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and play it, and now that I'm playing it, I'm going to move around the scene, as you can see down the bottom panel, and I'm going to move forward and touch the cube. And as soon as I touch it, it says, hit me. Uh, and you may not be able to see it, but it's happening up on the, on the uh, console window. Every time I, I go up to it and I touch it. And I can't make this any larger, but it's right up here. In other words, Unity knows when I have come up and I've touched this cube or I hit the cube. It's a, it's a trigger. In a real game, this would be made invisible and be something like a doorway there, so every time I walk through the doorway, it would know that I walk through the doorway. So let's see how it does that. Let's see how it knows that that kind of stuff is happening. All right, we're gonna stay on the screen. All 
I'm going to come back here uh, and get out of the run mode and come back to the scene here. And what I've done uh, with the first person controller, I'm going to click on the first person controller. That's me, okay? And the first person controller, this is the inspector panel. This is all the information about the first person controller that I can change. And one of the things that I see way down here at the bottom, it has attached to it a script that's called my trigger. Well, a script, it, I can write a script in Unity 3D either in JavaScript or in Boo, which sort of looks like Python, or I can write it in C Sharp. I chose to write it in JavaScript. So what I've done here is there is my script, and, and I've attached it to the first person controller. So every time the first person controller touches that box, this script is triggered. Let's see what's in that, uh, that script called my trigger. Stay there on the screen. And um, I'll double click on it. It'll take a while for this to come up. Okay, it's mono, mono development. And I'll see if I can enlarge it. Yeah, I can. This is the script that does it. It's a function called on trigger enter. And on trigger enter is a Unity 3D reserve function. And this right here, uh, this will pick up uh, what I've collided with. I'm really not using this, but I have to, have to put it there anyway. Then what I tell it to do is print hit me. In other words, every time I go in there and, and, and hit that trigger, on trigger enter will be initiated and this function will run which means it'll print hit me and that's exactly what you saw it said okay what's the big deal about that all right here's the big deal what i want to do is i want to come to the board here i'm going to take unity 3d and i'm going to save save that game where I just walk up to that cube and when I save it the game itself will be put into an HTML docu document. There'll be an HTML document, a web page that has HTML in it and if it has HTML in it uh, what that means I can also put script in it and I can also put uh, put style in it so I can style it as well besides scripting with it and what have you. So. What this will do then, this will call a Unity, the Unity program that is actually that game that you saw up there. The other thing it'll call, it'll call a JavaScript file, and the JavaScript file will give information to this as to how to control it, and they'll have one more file. And this should be familiar to you. It is the file is jQuery. Remember, we talked about jQuery. We had a whole lecture on jQuery. So jQuery is actually put in. So I'll see one, two, three, four different files when I go to save it. So now what can happen is that I can put JavaScript code here that every time that's hit, it triggers the JavaScript code here. And now the JavaScript code can now do some HTML5 stuff right through the browser. And that's what we're going to be going to next. So we're going to go back on the, on the screen there. And what I'm going to do with this print hit me thing, I'm going to, I'm going to add this right here. Uh, I, I, I'm on another uh, screen here. And I'm just going to do a control C to copy. And I'm going to come here. And then I'm going to come here. And I'm going to paste it, control V. And it says application external call. And bear with me on this. I don't need the print hit me anymore, so I'm going to take that out. And I'll explain what I've done. I'm going to do a control S to save it. Application dot external call. This is a Unity class uh, for some kind of application. And this is a reserve term for for, uh, from Unity, 
uh, it's going to be an external call, which means that when this is in a, a web browser, it's going to call a function inside the browser called my counter. And I have to put that function in there. So every time this trigger gets hit now, it's going to call this function inside the browser my counter. This is the argument, and I'm not passing anything, so I just use empty parentheses. But you could pass values in here if you wanted to. So this right here is going to be in the HTML document. It's going to be there as a separate JavaScript function. OK, that's important. All right, staying on the screen, I'm going to go ahead and save this, and then I'm going to close it. And then I'm going to run this again and do this. And then just come up here and hit that. And now what it's doing is saying external call my counter, external call my counter. And then I'm going to do this here. I'm going to close this down for a second and I'm going to look over here. Here's, I have an empty folder called Unity 2. This is where I'm going to save uh, the game that I have, if you want to call it a game. I'm going to save it in this folder right here. And I'm going to save it as a web page. And here's how I do it. I make sure that I save this, OK? And I, I just came up here and I put uh, save scene as. And then now what I want to do is I want to take it and I want to do some build settings. And if you notice what I can do here, I can now save this Unity game in a web player, which is what I want to do. I could save it on a PC, Mac, and Linux standalone. So it's just like a standalone game that you would install. Of course, as a web player, I don't need to install it. I can make it an Android. I can make it a Google native client. I can make it an iOS. I can make it an Xbox 360. I can make it a PS3. Uh, and I could also. Let me scroll down here. Make it a Wii, or I can make it a Flash Player. Now, this is not the latest version of Unity 3D uh, that I have here, uh, because I think they removed the Flash Player component. So it says, OK, a web player. Uh, I want this scene that I have now. I want it streamed. I want it to be offline deployment. So I'm going to build it. And now it says, where do you want to build it? Well, I want to build it in Unity 2. That's the empty folder. So I'm going to select the folder. And now it's compiling the scripts. It's doing the build. And now there it is, Unity 2. So I open it. Now let's see what's in there. These are the four uh, documents that I talked about. What I have in here now is I have the jQuery, I have the Unity HTML stuff, I have the Unity uh, uh, 3D, this is actually the, the, all of the stuff for the game, and then I have the Unity Object JS, this is JavaScript that will control it. I'm going to double click on this, and then I'll open it, we'll see what's on the inside. So I'm going to double click. And here it comes, it's starting to load the Unity game into it. And there I am, just like I had uh, before. And I can move around in this world. I'm using my S key, my D key. And I'm going to come up here and, and click it. And nothing's happening. I don't see anything at all happening in the browser. What this is, is that all of this is an HTML document, as you can see here. The whole thing is. Uh, this is something that's being called from that Unity uh, 3D uh, file, which is right in here. I want what's in here, what I'm doing here, to be able to talk to what's out here. And what I do here to influence with what's out here. And here's how I can do that. Stay on the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this down. And I'm going to right click. And I'm going to open with my favorite editor, which is Notepad. And when I open it with Notepad, there's my document. And this should not be strange to you. Uh, 
Here's my head. Here's the head of the document. Uh, the definition, the doc type on this, as you can see, this is not uh, a, a HTML5 uh, document. This is uh, the older XHTML. If it were HTML5, it would be doc type HTML, and that's it. It wouldn't have all this. So, like I said, this is the older version of, of Unity, but it doesn't make any difference. What I'm going to do down here, here's a jQuery function. That should look familiar to you. There's the dollar signs for it and what have you. I'm going to put... Um, I'm going to put that function that I talked about. Remember, I called it. What did I call it? I called it uh, uh, my counter, external call my counter. Okay. So, and again, I'm going to copy paste it just so you don't have to go through the the messiness of my of my slow typing. I'm going to do a control C. And I'm going to come right here, and I'm going to do a control V. And you say, wow, man, look at all that code you put in there. Man, what are you doing to me? Okay, let's, let, me, let me highlight what I put in and see if this stuff makes sense. And let me, let me, take, let me take you through what happened. This is a JavaScript function. I put it inside the script element. This is where the script element ends that, uh, that Unity 3D set up for me. I said that the, that the uh, function I was going to call would be named my counter. Had a lowercase m and a capital C. So that's what I named it, my counter. I said it would have an argument, so I just put something in there. It's going to be blank. Now, here's the rub. If local storage dot my count, you might say, wait a minute, what is local storage my count? Well, local storage is a function that actually comes from HTML5. And what it does, it allows uh, for the browser to store information on the client. This is not a cookie. This is a bona fide database. This is equivalent to SQLite, where I can use queries and stuff on it. What this does, it says, what I want you to do, I want you to store the value of my count. My count is an integer. So what happens, it says, if local storage my count, if it does exist, if there's something there, then local storage my count is going to be number local storage dot my count plus one. Number casts this to a number value. Otherwise, uh, the uh, uh, JavaScript is going to think it's a string. So, if if however if this doesn't exist, if local storage in other words this is the first time I've used a program that's what the else is for, then local storage my count is going to be equal to one. And, and, and now what I have here is that I have a message, variable my message, this is a string, e equals, and this is inside quotation marks, your score is, there's the end of quotation marks, concatenate local storage dot my count. In other words, what will happen is that this is going to say your score is and whatever the value of this is. So every time this is called uh, in, in the game, what's going to happen is that uh, local storage my count is going to be increased by one. Now, I'm using a document object model here. Uh, and fundamentally what I'm doing here, I'm saying document get element by ID. And you should remember that lecture. I'm using camel case here. And it's going to be my stuff. So I have to have something with that as an, I, uh, an ID, uh, as an attribute. And it's inner HTML is going to be this message. So what will happen, it will display my message, your score is, through the web browser. But I have to find out where in the web browser I want this displayed. All right, stay, stay on there, please. So I'm going to come down here now. And this is all my style sheets that Unity 3D has set up for me. All my style. I'm going to come down here to the body. And uh, I got to remember what, what it was that I called that. I called that uh, my stuff, okay? So I'm just going to highlight my stuff because that's what the ID has to be for the, uh, for the HTML element that I'm going to use to display that, that text. So I'm coming down here to the body and I'm going to put an H1 element in there. H1, and I'm going to put ID is equal to, uh, this will be the attribute, the control V, my stuff, okay? And then I'm going to close that and then close off the uh, H1 element. And then let me just do this. So this is stuff that I'm adding to the 
web page that Unity 3D made for me. And staying on the screen here, what's going to happen now, this is the identifier of my stuff that the document object model was referring to. And the inner HTML, even though this is, uh, this is an empty element, uh, the inner HTML is going to put that text right in there. Fingers crossed, everything always works right the first time. Okay, so staying on the screen. I'm going to make sure I save this control S and then I'm going to come here like this and now I'm going to go on unity here and then I'm going to come here and it says your score is one your score is two so what I see here this is actually in the HTML document. This is the code that I put in. So it's counting. Every time this gets hit now, it calls that external JavaScript function. That external JavaScript function now uh, goes in and starts doing the counting. And notice that this is now a two. I'm going to make it a five. There's three, there's four, four, come on, you can do it. <laughs> there's five. Okay, now, it's been hit five times. I'm going to close the web page. I close the document. So the document is completely closed. The count was left at five. I could now shut off the computer. I'm not going to do that because it takes too long to boot it up, but I could. I could shut off the computer. I could turn off the lights here in the classroom. I could go home. I could come back next week and fire this up again, and let's see what the count uh, is going to be. Okay, I'm going to double click. There it is. Okay, and then I come here. And now what does it say? Score is six. So the point is, the power of this is that it remembered it remembered where the count left off. The reason why is because it's stored it locally on the computer I'm using here. Now, if I if this were up on on, on the on the on the host provider and I did this on a different computer, it wouldn't remember that. So, what's important about that? What's important about that is now I can start saving all kinds of things locally. I can save what level I left off at. I can save if I have a registration. I can save if I have a username and a password to get into this game. Uh, the, the, what I can do with this is, is almost endless. It's just a fantastic, fantastic tool. Okay. Um, there's a few things that I need to cover. Uh, let's get back to the board, please. One of the things that we saw in the last lecture is we saw JSON files. JSON stands for Java Script Object Notation. Since it's written in JavaScript, the editor is Notepad. It's open source and it's free. And if you haven't heard about it, that's because there's no advertising budget for it. Most browsers have JSON built into it. And what JSON will do, JSON will store data as objects. And, and it'll store an array of objects, and that object itself can now be stored as a string, and it can transmit data that way. As a matter of fact, Unity 3, 3D itself uses JSON to help describe uh, what's going on. If, if you recall, in the last lecture, JSON was used in order to describe a 3D model, the structure of a 3D model. So my suggestion for Jason, since this is the last lecture, we don't have time to, to do this, is to research this, just Google it. And you'll find many great tutorials on Jason. 
But you should know JSON if you're going to do anything at all with HTML5 or databases and what have you, just like you should know XML. And we had a lecture on XML. Uh, XML and JSON uh, do about the same things, they just do it differently. So some of the, uh, we saw that uh, for one of the formats uh, from last lecture uh, for a 3D model was done in XML. Okay, staying, staying on the board here. We talked about last time, we talked about how uh, uh, a mesh is made uh, using points. And we talked about that when, when, uh, when we used polys to make, to make a 3D model, that we said that we always had straight lines. Everything that we had was with straight lines. And what the computer stored was just the points. Okay, it didn't store any information about uh, the surfaces uh, like it would in a GIF or a JPEG. This was like for a 3D model. Now, uh, there are exceptions to that. And, and one exception is called a Bezier curve. And fundamentally what it is, is that I can get the computer instead of to draw a straight line, it can draw a curved line. But the way it does that, it does that by having information about two points. As I move this line, the curve that it's going to generate it will move. There'll be another line here with two points. And there'll be another line here with two points. And as I move these points, a mathematical formula will now generate a curved line for me. All of the points in this curved line are not stored in the computer. If they were, and I had a large object, it, it would just overwhelm the computer resources. The, the thing that's stored in the computer is where these points are, and then from that, using mathematical formulas, it'll project a line and then know how to sketch this out, depending on where these points. So again, it's like this here, where the point information is stored. The point information is stored here, uh, but it, it, it's just interpreted differently. We're gonna go to the, to the screen now, and there's one other thing that we, that I need to explain that I didn't cover um, last time. And let me get out of this guy. Oh, I can do it right here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look up, um, uh, let's see, NURBS. Um, N-U-R-B-S. N-U-R-B-S. And I'm going to go to the Wikipedia, because this is something else that you'll, you'll hear about when you're doing 3D models. Remember we talked about uh, there were two kinds of folks that did 3D models. There were the users that knew how to use these systems. Uh, and then there were the developers that knew how to create these systems. A NURB is a non-uniform rational B-spline. You might say, whoa, man. What it is is simply a mathematical model that allows the computer to generate curved surfaces. However, since it's three-dimensional, what you're seeing here obviously is a video, but it, if, since it's three-dimensional, uh, it can uh, generate, present, or render those surfaces as if they were curved. But all it's storing in the computer, it's only storing information about the points. Stay on the screen here, and, the sc and it'll illustrate what I mean by that. Here's an animated version. Okay, here we go. If you notice what it's doing here, these are the points that it stores information about. What it does is that it interprets uh, the slope of these lines, how they're sloped, that, that as to how it should generate the curve, how it should render it. This curve is only rendered when it's needed. Uh, the st stuff that's actually stored inside a computer are those points in order to make that. Uh, and, and the formulas that are used to do that, stay on the screen, please. The mathematics that's used to, to generate that is, uh, oh yeah, I gotta go back here, I'm sorry. Okay, stay with me, it's right down here. 
there's a math that's for the B splines. And there's uh, for the for the NURBS curve. So even though it's stor storing information about points, the the the, uh, the machine itself that's generating these objects that you see is using these mathematical formulas in the background to generate those curved surfaces. But again, the stuff that's actually stored in the computer is not the curved surface because again that that would overwhelm the computer. It's just the points that are stored in there. Okay, so we know about NURBS, and we know about Bezier curves, and we know about um, uh, Jason. Okay. All right. So back on the the board here. So to wrap this up, I hope this has whetted your appetite on using uh, Unity 3D with uh, all the features that HTML5 has. As a matter of fact, Unity working with HTML5 could be a whole nother lecture series. So I hope you've enjoyed this lecture series for the summer and uh, we're all looking forward to having future lecture series. Okay, that's it for this lecture. Thank you for attending. <laughs>